Okay. It's a pleasure to be here this morning kicking off the start of Hashtag Sports, and I'm sure it will be two amazing days of programming. I'm honored to share the stage with Julian and Asaf. Um, I think we might have an opportunity for some Q&A towards the end of this, so if you see the hashtag somewhere up behind me, if you want to tag HS19, if you have any questions, we might be able to get to them at the end. Some of us have had the opportunity to get to know uh, Asaf for the past number of years. My first interaction with Asaf was over a decade ago at a house party in San Francisco, of all places, well before Coast Productions, well before Super Digital. For those of us in the room who don't know, what's the origin story behind this partnership and when you guys met and how this all came to fruition? Do you want to start it off? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll start. Uh, I'll let him start. So uh, I'll make it fast. Uh, I had a uh, colossal failure of a startup called Unreal Candy. It, it's now doing okay. But I started uh, Unreal Candy uh, many, many years ago with a couple others. And uh, the board gutted me first, which they were right to do. I was a prick. Uh, and then a, <laughs> a week after I got let go, Julian broke his ankle against, I think, Miami? Fifth, my, fifth metatarsal. Fifth against fifth Miami. Yeah. Uh, after not having so much success for a couple of years, and uh, we were sort of in the dirt together, and we started to do some marketing things. I went back to my roots, designed some logos. He started to get really creative. He doesn't get enough credit for his creative spirit, uh, and we started to make some content. Pulled together, we pulled together Kyler very early. He's our director for the film, and also uh, a big uh, creative uh, force for us. We pulled together some content. We started to uh, make some merchandise, make some videos, and before we knew it, we were on a roll, and uh, some pretty cool things happened. This was 2013. Now every athlete is an Instagram star, right? but we were the first. We basically, uh, he was kind of, you know, uh, he was kind of like the nerd, <laughs> and I was the jock that had creative aspirations. And he, we would sit and hang out, and we would always brainstorm. I'm, I'm the looks, he's the brains. <laughs> <laughs> we would hang out, and uh, we'd always brainstorm. And uh, in, in New England, you don't have really uh, you know, kind of a chance to give off your personality as much when you're dealing with workplace media or any of that kind of stuff, because we're pretty private, and everyone knows that. Um, so I sat down with the soft and he kind of came to me and said, hey, you know, what are you interested in? Uh, what do you like to do? And what, what can we do? We could do something to show people what you're about. And I was sitting there and I was like, I mean, I sit and watch the Food Network. Like I, I watch Chopped, I cook sometimes. He goes, well, why don't we make a video about you making something? He goes, what do you make all the time? I go, I, uh, I make a smoothie every morning. I, and he goes, let's do like a spoof video of you making a smoothie. And then we made smoothie time. And, you know, we, uh, it was my first time kind of behind any kind of production of even this little short film that we did. And the whole time I'm like, this is going to be terrible. I don't know what we're thinking. It was before I knew everything about the edit room, <laughs> anything about the edit room. And so we did this thing and kind of... It took off and people started laughing and then we started making other ones and then companies started coming to us and wanting us to make videos with their products in it and we kind of set this stage of athletes making their own kind of commercials with organic type uh, marketing and you know that then it snowballed into like let's do a short let's start a production company uh, we, we partnered with NFL, the NFL Films and made a documentary with them uh, about Danny Amendola and myself going to Mexico. I learned a lot on that and then, uh, you know, boosted off Coast Productions together and started uh, with our ultimate launch of the new uh, documentary. So that's, that's what great. we did. Yeah, and I think for those of us who have worked in the athlete space and the media space for a number of years, in many ways, Julian and Asaf have been pioneers in terms of how they've thought about building and using social media. And one of those ways has been the investment of video as a format. You mentioned a little bit about sort of the origins around smoothie time, around burger time. In general, how have you been thinking about video as a brand builder for you relative to the other ways in which you use social? It's probably for me. Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> 
I could dabble. <laughs> I got it. Um, I mean, to tell you the truth, I think uh, social media for us, and Facebook platforms more than the rest, um, they are sort of the bricklaying. We've always had aspirations, I think, from fairly early on in our relationship to go to features and to go to you know, series and, and you know, there's some cool things coming, talk about that later. But um, um, I think what we did with video, it, it, and we weren't doing it, we, we started, he had 15,000 total followers across two, the two big platforms. I mean, it was nothing, but it was a testament that if you're creative enough and you sort of think critically enough and you use the tools that are just laid there for all of us. I mean, it's, you, can, you can do incredible things because people want good content. We, we weren't like selling something that was hard for people to, to take in. This was a, a, a desired commodity. So we were just, we, we were, were thinking a little more critically than you see in sports. I think today it's shifting, but it, we were a little more thoughtful. Got it. You referenced earlier that brands were starting to come up to you and, and approach you. I think for platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, et cetera, th we constantly beat the drum that athletes should build their social media presence in order to unlock further opportunities around athletes monetizing their personal brands. Can you speak a little bit to how your investment in social, just in general, has unlocked some of those doors, whether it's through the launch of these series, whether it's through just cultivating your audience and engaging them on a regular basis? Well, I think it's it, it's ultimately like one of the hugest parts of negotiation with any kind of brand now is through social because everyone wants to see engagement and see the click and who's watching the impression and all that. Uh, it, it's it's opened up a huge amount of doors, and uh, honestly, like that's what it's about now with with this generation everyone wants instant satisfaction and sliding and all that and commercials are almost dying and everyone's relying on these these platforms to kind of build your brand and and go from there and and kind of live that influencer life uh which which has created so many crazy jobs for everyone out there uh, it's kind of piggybacking on that with your crowd uh, that, that supports you as a an athlete yeah, social gave us a lot. I mean, yeah. we are, uh, I mean, Dave won't tell me the real numbers now, but we think that we are the number one D to C in the NFL uh, based off some, and I won't get into that here, but we believe we're the biggest in the league. We sell more merchandise direct to the fans than any other player. We produce a ton of video content. Uh, the best one is the salesperson. So if you're going to leave, go watch the salesperson. That's our best video. Um, we've written children's books. He's, this is a New York Times bestseller. This is, uh, uh, we've, uh, uh, we've been to Israel because of social media and done amazing things there. I mean, it, it's, social media has given us so much and uh, Facebook largely. I mean, you know, Twitter we're using now. I don't know if you've noticed lately, we're evolving that into just sort of like, here's some facts, but it's changing a little bit there. But they all have their own. Anyways. I think the Asafs of the world, the agents of the world have picked up on this trend of using social as potentially leverage for some of the deal making that you're doing, going and selling a doc to Showtime, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a lot of athletes ask the questions of folks like myself and other folks who work at these platforms, what is the line between content that you should be sharing and engaging with your audience and what are the things that you wanna keep for yourself and the things where you don't necessarily always want the lights to be on? I don't know if there are any rules of thumb that both of you try to adhere to, or if it's really Julian, you just trying to figure out the best expressions of who you are and your personality, but how have you thought about that over the past number of years? Uh, I think it changes for everyone. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's an actual like pinpoint, this is too much, this is not enough, or whatever. Um, for us, it's always been kind of lighthearted and, and you know, whatever, honestly, how I'm feeling at the, the time we're doing it. Uh, if, if I feel comfortable or not comfortable, he's going to try to take it to a whole nother level. And I have to, like, meet him three quarters of the way down from that level uh, just because that's how the soft is sometimes. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where... I mean, you look at some people and they're fully invested and that's their brand and 
that works for them. Um, you know, we kind of pick and choose where we can go uh, and, and how we approach things. And, uh, you know, it's a feeling thing as well for, for us, for me at least. What do you think of soft? Oh, yeah, I mean, I get recognized everywhere. It's annoying. <laughs> uh, uh. Um, no, I think that it is, uh, he's right, it's a balancing act. And there's no on-off switch. Okay, now we're not going to show ourselves. Now we are. It's, it's touch and feel. It's very ephemeral. You go with the flow and you sort of feel it. Um, and if, like in football, we have this term called, you know, this is a copycat play. This is a copycat team, meaning that there is a team that used this play. They saw it from another team against that same defense, and it succeeded. If we see something that someone's doing, I mean, we're not going to be afraid to like, all right, does this make us comfortable? We'll, we'll, you, know, you, you take, I mean, and you that's, take it and you kind of do it. That's what Tom did with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, thinking back a number of years ago when, when the both of you were at, like, sort of the burgeoning party <laughs> of your partnership, I remember, Safi, you were saying that the Ryan Allens of the world, the Chandler Jones of the world were starting to come to you asking for advice or figuring out how they can tap into this. How much have you seen your ability to be successful on social and engage more deeply with your fans and virtually every other athlete on the platform. How have you seen your colleagues in the locker room want to tap into that and learn from you as you sort of set the trend for how athletes interact on social? It's funny because I came into the league at 2009 and I was like the first guy on the team to have Twitter, Instagram, you know, that was like the real millennial kid while everyone else was like just on their phone, like texting and stuff, it was all the older guys. And, and coming in, now it's kind of flipped and I'm that older guy and you see this completely new generation of kids. And it, it's funny because you got like rookies coming up to me like, hey buddy, hey, let me get in a smoothie time. Let's do some, <laughs> let's do some, some work. And, and the interaction that they do on social media is just so crazy. Uh, it, you definitely get asked a whole bunch of, from people, and, and that's, that's what it's about. Everyone wants to do collaborations because social media can connect you to so many different types of people. So if you do a collaboration with, say, a Snoop Dogg, and, you, know, you, get, you can gather people that are supporting him, connect our people, and it, it just catches like wildfire. I mean, it's essentially networking on, on the Internet or on the platform. What do you think, Soft? Yeah, Snoop's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, it's, he, he's, he's, I don't have to say anything anymore. He's, he's coached up. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> I'm just here for eye candy. <laughs> so in the theme of uh, Julian and Asaf, really, again, being far more innovative early days around how they built their brands on social, I think one of the ways in which many of us know in this audience that they've been really innovative is around merch and around the building of the JE11 brand, but also capitalizing on tentpole moments in Julian's career. And so we'd be curious your perspective on merch as a whole um, and how you've thought about building the JE11 brand, but also capitalizing on those tentpoles, whether it was the catch against the Atlanta Falcons, whether it was the MVP bid that you had this past February and your ability to capitalize on that moment. We'd love your thoughts on that. Oh, yeah, that's, that's my favorite subject lately. Uh, yeah, the, the, the big one that uh, Dave is referring to is um, the pass uh, again in the 15 divisionals, 2015 divisionals against Baltimore. So merchandise is a huge part of what we do. Uh, we started it just to make a couple bucks back when we were trying to figure it all out, and actually it has become an art form that is honestly second, maybe only to filmmaking and maybe not even. We love the process of design. We love the process of, 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 of showing folks what they're looking for based off of a million metrics that we're evaluating. It's, it, 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 and, and optimizing, it's, it all sounds kind of nerdy and boring, but it is a blast. Um, 2015, Patriots, Ravens in Foxborough, uh, AFC divisionals. Julian threw a pass. Uh, to Danny Amendola, I think that was the go-ahead. No, no, no. That, that, that was a that changed the score of the game, and that and that and that turned the tides, and that they won the game. Usually, we go. I go after. We go celebrate, whatever. Go hang out a little bit. Flew home that night. Design had designed all night. We released a T-shirt of Julian throwing that pass. Yes. So uh, 
maybe four hours after the game ended. Uh, and we did a quarter million in sales in the three days after. Uh, and we did that by targeting. We did that by getting PR support, of course, but also, I mean, we just I mean, obliterated social and timing was there. So we've done all, you can try to like study design and, and what's popular and, and this look to that look, but it always came down to our best sales always were after like influential plays or something and something that we delivered super quick. So if we had like the catch after the uh, Seven, Atlanta 17, 17 uh, the, the big muff catch, whatever, we threw up that like immediately after and that was one of our big ones. And so we should have called it the muff catch. The muff catch. That's yeah. way better. <laughs> yeah, I know. Muff catch. But uh, to get back on our topic, it's always been about timing. <laughs> It's always been about uh, timing and, and, and the ability to catch and seize a moment, which has always caught like the fire the most. It's, it's, it's pretty, like some of our best, like, some of our, our designs that we've thought were the absolute, like we spent so much time, it was the best. Oh my God, this thing looks spectacular. Sold like absolute terribly. Oh yeah. And oh, then, we have this hipster piece, the, the New England one with like, the art, the revolutionary skull, and like you know the artisanal type, and yeah. like it's perfect, and it's like it's designed for Brooklyn. I sold like fifty of them. Nothing. Yeah, like nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you know then you got a silhouette of like faded dude throwing a ball. Yeah, and it's <laughs> yeah. So we sold a lot. I think there's a there's an element of of urgency in terms of capitalizing on some of those moments. And what's interesting is for some of us in the room some media brands that have tried to do the same thing, whether it's Barcelona Sports or Bleacher Report, et cetera, around, around that urgency. How is your team set up to do those things? I mean, is there a creative team that a soft scout on speed dial to make sure that when you're watching Julian Edelman during a playoff game that, that you're thinking the business aspect of it while he's thinking about how he's actually trying to win the game? So I don't know if you know this, but we call it the emergency room. And it's actually, it's, it's, a, it's a creative director, a designer, and a copy guy, our copy guy. <laughs> uh, and we are ready during all the games, so just in case that thing happens. That and then also, you know, if, if I think of something and I'll be like, hey, I'll call us off and I'll, like the gotta believe hat. I was watching was the, big. the World Surf League on Instagram or something and they had an insane cool hat about it. And, we needed to launch a, a gotta believe the two after the second Super Bowl a piece of merchandise and I called him and I sent him a screenshot of this hat. I said, "Hey, go to town, make something that kind of looks like this with this logo," and that you know, and he went yeah. to work and, and it's kind of like there's no particular yeah. way. It just uh, I actually knew in my heart that that one was going to be a loser, and that was like a killer hat too. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> We won on that one. We, we did. We, we don't. We won. We won on that one. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Julian Edelman has a has a background in in passing the ball, and I think your career stats are three for four with almost 100 yards and a touchdown. How receptive is Bill Belichick to getting more passing plays in the playbook in 2019? Uh, do you want the Patriot answer? Or? <laughs> I don't think he's in the room, so I think let's get the real answer. There's no camera. There's no one has Twitter. All right. No. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe. I, you, honestly, I've been around this man for 11 years, and he could sit across from me, and I still have no clue what he's thinking about. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm dead serious. He's got a poker face like no other. Um, if they asked me to, I, I would I'd welcome him with open arms. But... Uh, I'm also not tripping because uh, three for four with the tuggy is not too bad if I go down in, in history with that. So we'll keep it. Sure. So they're in town this week, and we were fortunate to have, to have some of their time promoting the launch of the Julian Edelman 100% doc that launches Friday, 9 p.m. on Showtime. Obviously, you had to go through you know, what some might call a catastrophic injury and then the suspension in order to have this amazing comeback story over the past 12, 24 months. At what point after that injury did both of you think, this is a story that we should be telling, even if the ending had yet to be written? Or was it more after the MVP bid, 
thinking yourself that we should go and tell that story retroactively. So this, this ties back into his comfort level that we were talking about of when and how involved you want to be. And in 2017, when we were, before we were about to go into the playoff run, the soft came to me and he goes, I think we should get some footage of your routine and what you do before and after work. And we'll just make like a little mini doc about this set of this playoffs. And I just couldn't commit to it. I, I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't want to mess with my routine, a little superstitious. You know, everyone's got their things. And so we go on and we end up winning the Super Bowl against Atlanta. And he comes up to me right after, like, shaking his head, like, that could have been the launcher. And I was <laughs> like, ah, it could have been the launcher. But, you know, so I said, all right, maybe the next, next time, the next time we have an opportunity, we'll do it. And so we go into 2008 or 17, and the third preseason game, I tear my ACL, you know. Of course, a soft, like four days later, after, after I'm a little uh, less heartbroken, comes up, hey, you know, maybe we should do a doc on this. And, <laughs> and that's the last thing you really want to hear. Uh, Give it four days. Yeah, four days. Four days. That's, that's the last thing you want to hear after you just found out you're not going to be playing the whole year. But, you know, I sat and I, I didn't really want to talk about it. I sat and I thought about it for a while and it was, more, it was you know, thinking over, you know, I'm going to have a lot of time and, and this is going to be an opportunity for me to create on my, uh, this is going to be an opportunity for me to work on my creativity. Uh, we got over there, we got to, are we cutting? All right, soon? <laughs> All right. It's going to be an opportunity for me to work on my creativity side. Uh, you know, we, I went to him and I was like, let's, let's just kind of have cameras just in case. And then one thing led into another, it snowballed. We sold it to, you know, a little, plat a little platform at first. No? No, we didn't say the name. Yeah, we didn't say that. Oh, you can, I mean, you can say that. Can say don't that. say the name. Just don't say the name. Yeah, I can't. I won't say the name. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we sold it to a platform, and then all of a sudden, you know, things started snowballing, got bigger, and then the story got crazier, and we kept on f shooting footage. And the whole time, I mean, we, 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 we kind of... We didn't necessarily know what we were going to do or what it shaped out to be until, you know, we went out and won the, the Super Bowl. And then that's when we were able to mold something that, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty proud of and happy about. And he's, he did it. Him and Kyler did an amazing job of, you know, as an, as an athlete, it's, it's super tough to kind of put your mind in two areas because, you know, ultimately, I'm here for football, and I want to keep my mind and my soul in there. You don't want any complacency getting out. And, you know, you, when you have a, a good team around you that, that kind of can understand, you know, like when to go in, when to not go in, uh, it makes things go along uh, a lot smoother. And, and they were able to do that and capture. So that's how uh, this thing kind of started. So I guess in the interest of time, we'll, we'll save the clip that we were going to show and go to Julian Edelman's Instagram channel. He'll have uh, promo clips up there so you can watch this before, before Friday's launch. I'll ask two more questions. Uh, one is, as you were thinking about, I mean, there are any number of, of organizations that are investing in premium content, Showtime, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, et cetera. How have you thought about each of those organizations, both traditional and newer digital social, in figuring out who the right partner was going to be on this project? So we knew uh, one of two things. We either wanted to go really forward thinking, or we wanted to go with folks who do premium top tier content. Um, so we were, we were thinking about Facebook, but Tom was already there. That wasn't right. I would have taken the whole thunder. No names. Uh, no names. <laughs> no names. Um, and, uh, you know, we had a short list of, of premium folks and we shopped it around, which we did not really know how to do it fell in our lap a little bit once we got to LA, but that worked out cause Showtime's an unreal partner. They let us be creative and entrepreneurial. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> and, uh, they let us do things that are off the cuff. I mean, we've got, we've got. Snoop Dogg reading Jules' suspension letter while smoking. We've got, you know, Mark explaining that Jules isn't famous enough to have a doc, right? Like, Mark Wahlberg, they can think we've got uh, 
Guy Fieri explaining ACL tears on pieces of celery. Like this is this thing is this is not this is not another sports talk. I promise you. This is I, I, we we sort of went into this knowing full well that you know there is a certain sports talks are great, but they certain they have a certain sometimes they can have a ceiling, and we wanted to just this is a rock and roll documentary that's about sports. You know, got Post Malone songs in there, and Johnny Cash, and and Snoop's in there, and the Black Keys. It's, Fun, it's fun. Don't go into this like, okay, well, let me assess this guy's career. No, this is like a fun, lighthearted energy. You're gonna have a blast. Watch it and then go party after. This is, a, cool. this is like a fun thing. Cool. So I think we're bigger than Anthony and Steve said, we'll wait for them to kick us off stage. Uh, my, my last question is, this is our first hashtag sports panel together. Fast forward to 2020, personally, professionally, uh, with the slate of productions that Coast is about to do. If you were doing this panel again in 2020, what's the story you want to tell then? I'm a, I'm a live in the present kind of guy. You keep people around you uh, for... So we have a couple projects in development. That's the political answer. We've got a scripted uh, series that we are uh, taking out now. And we've got uh, a feature that we are the same team is writing uh, right now that is a romantic comedy in the football world, uh, which is actually a lot of fun. Um, it's ridiculous. Uh, and uh, we hope we're here next year talking about uh, the, good, uh, the good work that Showtime and, and, and uh, the, good, the good work we do on Showtime and, and what we do with, uh, with uh, Facebook and Instagram. Because, man, that's the bread and butter. All this stuff is fun, and we're loving the Showtime stuff and all that. But, I mean, Instagram, we, we built our bones on that thing. So. Yeah. Well, and hopefully we're talking about another Super Bowl MVP from 2020 <laughs> as well. Oh, yeah, that, Even though I'm a Redskins fan, so there's really no chance of that happening for anybody <laughs> actually for. Um, but on behalf of the, the two of us, thank you for, for uh, letting us kick off hashtag sports. I know there's a great lineup above, ahead of us, or sorry, behind us, but uh, please give it up for Asaf and Julian for joining us today. <laughs>